everyone says we need to really move, swift, switch gears on climate change. What is the role of business in actually driving change, but bringing youth into the equation? How important is that? Absolutely integral. I think we've learned an awful lot about how to engage youth over the last three years specifically. They are using different platforms to be engaged. Um, they want this sense of empowerment. Um, they will respond much better to opportunity. Um, and also they are very capable consumer activists um, and you know sharing those experiences with their with their friends. So I think being able to kind of use all of that um, to kind of energize bottom-up pressure around the COP process, I think will certainly you know, start to help make a difference. Okay, we, we often have businesses that act on their own, but then we talk about the need for coalition. Do you think we're gonna get groups of businesses coming together to drive this agenda, or do you think actually that's the future? No, I think that that is happening currently. Um, looking at how um, the UN Global Compact CEO survey has identified you know, consumer behaviour change as being the next beachhead basically for the sustainability movement. So big businesses who have been investing in largely getting their supply chains in order over the last couple of years have come to the realisation that unless we create demand for these products and services and also awareness for a lot of these issues um, that a lot of our investment will have been in vain. So the same collaboration that has been happening in the supply chain over the last 10 or 15 years is now moving into um, brand campaigns but not in a you know a kind of an above the above the line advertising sense actually through using these new social media platforms to engage people in the conversation more effectively. Okay, Peter, business can't do everything. Should it be focusing on young people and driving consumer demand or actually is, is the purpose to actually drive supply chain and, and transform systemically rather than concentrate on marketing and consumers? Look, I think the answer is and, of course it's and. Uh, so I think the, the, the work that we've been doing with a number of the consumer goods industry companies and Neil and I together with BT around sustainable consumption, it's important, consumers matter. Uh, we saw that, that actually what would be the most transformative uh, impact would be to focus on Asian consumers, young Asian consumers, when you look at the future and the future impact. But, but I actually, I wanted to go back to Neil's point about the UN CEO study, because he's absolutely right the three beachheads, if you like, the, there was a real sense of frustration among CEOs that they want to go faster, that they want to take things to scale, uh, but to some extent they're frustrated by the ability to do that. And the three beachheads, one uh, was consumers and consumer demand, two, investors and the way that capital markets do or don't reward sustainability, and three, government intervention in the form of policy and regulation and the enabling environment. Now, to your question, should they focus on consumers, I, I guess, the analogy I would use is it's, it's a little bit like one of those old fashioned westerns where you're in a circle and consumers and governments and investors and businesses are all pointing guns at each other and no one actually quite knows who is pointing at who and who needs to go first, right? <laughs> Careful. Um, and actually, I think that's a reality that actually, you know, we have to decide, well, where do you place your bets? Uh, and actually, for me, I think that the biggest thing, the most transformational thing that is going to need to happen is to create this enabling environment with policy and regulation. And I think we heard that from CEOs. I think as we look at the road to Paris in uh, 2015, I think that's extremely important. It's not that I don't think we should also focus on consumers and youth, I do, but I actually think that the, the, the most likely leverage will come from that angle. Okay, and Neil, just coming back to young people, in the next year or two, what will you like to have seen change from now till then? So that there would be a co-created brand campaign that a lot of the brands who have been investing in sustainability over the last 10 or 15 years are all complicit in its execution. So they are putting their marketing and PR resources behind it and also they are doing it in an open source fashion. So they are trying to recruit other brands who care about these issues. And of course this is very, very relevant for a lot of brands who are losing their equity with the baby boomers, um, or, sorry, have, have were built for the baby boomers and are no longer relevant to this younger generation. They want to try and find find ways to re-engage with these younger millennials, whether it's in the US or in China. And a lot of them have great stories to tell, but you can't tell those stories through marketing campaigns because young people, and this is one of the things we found when we did the analysis, have some of the best BS detectors in the world. They are absolutely brilliant at kind of just tuning out when they are being marketed at. They want to be marketed with. They want to be engaged in the conversation. So I think that is going to be a fundamental principle to how this co-created campaign needs to work.